frankly, trade sanctions are a terrible tool of foreign policy. They hurt the wrong people, they club up ordinary folk in your own country and in the other country, and they drive support for the regime. You actually end up, it's not just useless, it's, it's, it's counterproductive. You end up propping up the regime of which you disapprove. So uh, let's actually get, I, I, there's a whole plethora of things I want to ask you about trade, Dan, but let's start with where you've just hot-footed it from, the House of Lords. There is a discussion going on, and you've just voted, on whether if the courts find that our putative trade partners have been involved in genocide or uh, some other human rights abuses, the British courts could render null and void a free trade agreement signed by the British government. Have I understood that correctly? That's a pretty good summary, yeah. I, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that is a, that's a pretty accurate summary. And most of the argument in both houses of parliament has been about, if you like, the politicization of the, the judiciary. Uh, ministers have said, well, you know, this isn't really the right role for judges and it's dragging them into the political arena. And if, as is fairly likely, the courts rule that they, they have insufficient evidence to make a determination, then it could be counterproductive because the bad guys would say, ah, oh, look, we've been cleared by the British. All of that's perfectly valid, but I think it falls at a much earlier hurdle than that. Frankly, trade sanctions are a terrible tool of foreign policy. They hurt the wrong people. They club up ordinary folk in your own country and in the other country. And they drive support for the regime. You actually end up, it's not just useless, it's, it's, it's counterproductive. You end up propping up the regime of which you disapprove. I, for example, have always been of the view, and I, I suspect that they knew it themselves, that the Cuban communists survived you know, a generation longer than the communists in, in most of the world because of the US blockade. It allowed the, 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 the Castro clique to, to tell Cubans that poverty was not caused by Marxist economics, it was caused by the Yankee embargo. And people, when they feel under siege, they, they rally to the regime. Putin knows it, right? The, the reason he keeps picking fights with us, the reason he keeps stimulating these conflicts is not because he's obsessed with absor uh, absorbing some little sliver of Georgia or whatever. It's because constant quarrels with the West make his population anxious and patriotic and defensive, and therefore, if you like, exactly in the mood to back Putin. And so I, I, I really feel we're making a mistake with this by saying it's it's the, you know, you, how many times have you seen this at the IA? It's like the classic bogus sequence in politics that says something must be done. Oh, here's something. Let's do that. And, you know, very quickly it becomes I'm voting for this because I'm against genocide without the uh, without the, the, the case being proved at all. And I'm afraid that is a real danger in, in any democracy that you get kind of performative legislation. But let me just put so you and so essentially you're on the side of the government here. You you and the government are at one on this. But the, the House of Lords has asked the government to think again so that you, you and the Lords, despite your vote, have sent it back to the Commons. Where, where is this going to end? I mean, is this just um, the House of Lords yeah, signalling so, I mean, something? There, there is, is a the lot of support. Provoke? There's a lot of support in both parties for, for this amendment. And by the way, when I say there is some performative uh, outrage, I, I do not for a moment want to suggest that that is true of the authors of the legislation. The, 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 the moving force here uh, is uh, Lord Alton, David Alton, the former mm -hmm. Lib Dem or uh, Liberal, I think he was, uh, MP, who, you know, no one would accuse him of, of virtue signalling. He, he, he manages the quite difficult uh, achievement in politics of being moral without being moralistic. Uh, and he, he, a lot of the people supporting it in all parties have, have been quite thoughtful about it, but, but not everyone. And certainly outside Parliament, you tend to get this kind of don't you care about the Uyghurs or whatever, mm -hmm. or the, you know, Burma or whatever. Well, really, can we can we not please raise the tone a little bit from there? Can we not take it as red? I, I don't think this is setting the bar too high that all of us are against crimes against humanity. I mean, I really don't think that's that big an ask, right? Yeah. The, 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 the issue is, what is the most effective way to deter a regime that is engaged either in genocide or in some sure. other appalling human rights abuses. Now, you could say 
look, it is so awful. We have such a, an imperative, such a moral obligation here that our only option is to stop the genocide or be defeated in the attempt. We will go in and patrol Xinjiang or mm -hmm. Burma or whatever with a coalition if we can and, and, and declare war if we need to, 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 to stop it going on. Or at the other end, you could say, not much we can do. We'll just sort of make a complaint in the UN. The right question for policymakers is where on the spectrum between those two points is the optimum? Where do you get the maximum uh, impact in an affordable and achievable way? And I think the answer has to be with micro-targeted sanctions, where you go after the bad guys, the officials and the politicians who are responsible. And by go after, again, there's a spectrum there. Are you talking travel bans? Are you talking asset seizures? Are you talking arrest warrants? Are you talking in extremist sort of Eichmann-style judicial kidnappings? But as a general proposition, you've got to be better off with targeted sanctions, it, 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 under which, by the way, I would include boycotting uh, produce produced by slave labor. I would include uh, not selling yep. instruments of repression. But ultimately, you've got to go after the people responsible. You've got to do this as, as keyhole surgery rather than just sort of hacking around with a cleaver, because although the latter shows that you're doing something, it isn't very effective. And if, if you look at the history of, of, of trade sanctions, they've almost never worked.